In the last version of the translator program that we wrote, we used a combo box and we used the items that we've added to the combo box to select a specific language um, in which to translate. We're going to do the same now. The program is going to work exactly the same, but the way we implement it is going to change. We're now going to use, instead of using the actual text, the, the language text like Zulu or Afrikaans, we're going to use the index of that language in the list. So if we look at our items property, we see Zulu is the first one, Spanish is the second one, and Afrikaans is the third one. So the combo box has a selected index property, which gives you the the number associated with the correctly selected item. So if a user selects Zulu, the item, the selected index property will be zero. When they um, select Spanish, it will be one. When they select Afrikaans, it will be two. So it starts counting at zero. Okay, so how this changes our program is we don't check for the text, we check, check for the selected index and if that is zero it's the same as saying oh, so the combo box is selected index property if it is zero it means this is zero okay if the select uh, selected index property is equal to 1 then it is Spanish so I'm just putting this in as comments and if the selected index is 2 then it is of the cards. Note that we don't put that in uh, quotes because the selected index property is an integer property. So now we have a number there. Okay. So what we've done is instead of checking for the text of the selected um, item in the list, we check for its index, in other words, its number. So if we run the program now, it's going to work exactly the same. Why did I do this? It is because I actually want to rewrite this whole program using a switch statement. A switch statement gives us another way to handle such a multiple selection if statement. So here we have a multiple selection if in the sense that we have multiple languages that we have to choose between. So how we do that is we write switch and then in brackets we write this variable on which all the conditions depend. So the switch statement can only be used if all the if statements depend on the same variable. In this case it's CBO language dot selected index. Okay, so we say the switch statement is going to look at that and then it's going to look at the different cases of that. So we're going to remove the if statement. Okay, the switch, the whole switch statement is enclosed in brackets. So we must just go in everything here in brackets. Why is it not happy? Oof, now I've messed up all my brackets. Let's just start over. Okay, we have the case where it is zero. Okay. Right, and then we have the case where it is one. And we will remove this. I'll go through it slowly with you just now. Okay, 
Okay, the reason why there's an error is because we have to start with a bracket there. Okay, we'll figure out the brackets just now. Can also close this whole section in brackets. Okay, so I've got why is it complaining? Okay. The reason why it's complaining is I must put a break after every case. Okay. So here our next case is where we want to translate in Spanish. And I'm going to say break over there. Mm. Break is in the wrong place. Okay. See how my brackets line up the moment I have them correctly. Okay. Over here, I'm going to take out this and then the last case is case 2, which is Afrikaans. Okay, and I'm going to put all of that in brackets and then just add a break. So we have a switch statement, which will look at the value of the selected index. In the case where it is zero, it will do the translation in Zulu. And then we just end the case with a break, because it means this is now the end of that case. The second case is where we will translate into Spanish. Okay. Then we have the if statement there that translates into Spanish. Okay, we end it with a break. And the last case is case 2. This is now where the selected index is 2. It's Afrikaans. And we have that statement. In the switch statement, we always end with a default case. And this is where we deal with an error. So if for some reason um, something has gone wrong, we will have a message box or something that says um, something is not right. Okay, so I am not sure. Let's correct that. Okay, again it says control cannot fall out of switch on final case it's meet because I didn't include the break. So every case must always have a break at the end. Right, so the basic format of a switch statement is that you have the word switch with the thing that you want to constitute the different cases. And then you have Okay, you open closing brackets, obviously, and then you have each case, okay, and below each case you have the code that belongs to that case. After the last case, you have a default case. So if none of the previous cases help, it will come here and it will do whatever you want it to do. So I just put in a simple message, something is not right. So let's see if this works. Okay, if I type warm. Okay, I'm now deliberately not going to select anything and click on translate. So this is that default case. Something is not right. Because I didn't select anything, the index, the selected index is not 0, 1, or 2. So it's something is not right. Okay, if I do go and select something and I click on translate, then I get the right word. Okay. And so on. All right, so in the lecture, in the lecture slides, you will also see an example of a simple switch statement. This was just um, an illustration of how you can translate a multiple selection if statement into a, a switch statement.